Hello, Sana. Hi. Hi, this is Steve Schwartz calling. How are you? Doing good. How are you? Sorry, I just missed your call. Oh, it's okay. Great to connect with you. What's going on for you with your LSAT prep? Um, so I feel like my situation is kind of different. I've already taken the LSAT twice. I've applied, and now I'm kind of debating whether or not I should retake, reapply, or just start in the fall. Okay. Well, what happened for you previously? What, what's going on for you at the moment? Okay, so I studied last summer. I took the September, got a 165, retook in November, got a 166, which really was a lot lower than what I was getting on my practice test. I was consistently in the 170 area, but for some reason I like bombed my reading comp and that just threw my whole score off. But I decided just to apply. Um, I have a 4.0 GPA and I'm a STEM student and I applied late December, early January. Um, my top two choices right now that I've been accepted are Berkeley and Georgetown. Um, I'm waitlisted at Michigan, Chicago, a bunch of other places, Duke, Texas, Cornell. Um, I don't have much in terms of scholarship from Georgetown. I haven't heard back from Berkeley, so I know that I can score higher. I'm just not sure if it's t worth taking the risk of taking a year off retaking the LSAT, restudying, and then spending all the money to reapply again. Sure, sure. I totally hear what you're saying. And I guess it comes down at this point to scholarship money because I understand you've gotten into some pretty impressive schools. Right, yeah. But, I mean, Georgetown, they I just heard back from them yesterday. They're offering me $20,000 a year. Um, and then Berkeley hasn't given me anything, but I'm trying to negotiate with them and then maybe – go back and negotiate with Georgetown for more. But either way, I know I won't get a lot in terms of money, which is a concern. Um, my parents will um, support me and uh, financially support me through law school, which I'm really grateful for, but I really don't want them, I really don't want for them to have to spend that much money for three years of education. Yeah, yeah, I totally understand. It's, it's a tough position because you got into some great schools already. You still have the big question mark of the wait list for the others. I do wonder mm -hmm. if and this is it's funny how things have changed so much in the just the, the past couple of years, but I do wonder if you could potentially take the June LSAT, for example, and come back to the law schools that have waitlisted you with potentially higher results on the June LSAT and then still be able to start law school this fall. I thought of that, but I never really uh, researched that. I wasn't sure if schools would take that into consideration, but I think I've seen some students do that, um, would let it take the June one and send that to schools, or also yeah. use that for scholarship negotiations for schools that they've already accepted, try to bump up their scholarships. I don't know if you've heard of any students doing that. Oh, of course. Yeah. I mean, you can do it for a school that's already accepted you and say, I'd love to go, but such and such other school offered me XYZ. Can you match or exceed that? Or just say, you know what? I got a few points higher on my LSAT. Does that give you any mm -hmm. negotiation? Does that give you any leverage or wiggle room there? You'd be surprised, but LSAT score LSAT score is just a few points difference makes a massive difference on their end in terms of what they're able to do for you. So I would contact them and say, right. see, you could ask them now even if I got a few points higher on the June LSAT, would you consider that higher score for this cycle and see what they'd say? I mean, you apply to a wide enough range of schools that I think that for at least a couple of them, it could make a difference for you this cycle and wouldn't necessarily require you waiting an entire year. Okay. Yeah. I kind of only thought about that for like for a short time, but I think I might look into that more. Um, do you think they would also consider the July LSA or do you think that would be too late? I think they're less for likely them. to consider it, but the cycle has extended so much as you can see that the majority of schools you listed had waitlisted or deferred you. Am I correct about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, it's just funny how that's changed so much in recent years. They, It's kind of their default position to waitlist and defer to see who else will come along because it is so numbers driven. And with the recent decline in applicants over the past few years, they are waiting mm -hmm. longer and longer to see who else comes along, which isn't necessarily the most polite thing to do, of course, but it is what it right. is. And I think that you might be surprised. People do people do hear back even in July or even a couple of weeks before the semester starts, and they could totally change their trajectory of their next three years based on that alone. 
Huh. Okay. And I also had one extra question. Do you think, I don't know if there's any data you can look to or anything, um, do you think next cycle, this upcoming cycle, will be more competitive than this one? Like what what are predictions in terms of the next cycle, if you have any info on that? That's a great question. I, it's Unfortunately, it's always hard to say. I don't really play the predictions game too much. It could, go, right. it could no, really go in any sense. direction. But yeah. I think that you've you've got a strong application already. You've already gotten into a couple of great schools and even the 20,000 a year. That, that's something. You know, That's nothing to sneeze at. But I think it could be worth retaking in June regardless. There's mm-hmm. not really a downside because if you do better, you come back to the schools with a higher score. If you don't do better, well, they only consider the highest anyway, so you didn't really lose anything. Right, right. Okay. I will definitely look into that and contact them, but thank you for that suggestion. My pleasure, Sonny. Keep in touch and let me know how it turns out for you. And of course, if I can help in any way as you move forward. All right. Thanks again. Bye.